Okay, so this is one sample of equation that you will also see one example how to use this equation. So, uh, as I said, let's say you have two cases, two scenarios. You have, uh, let's say, you have a heat exchanger, okay? Okay, this is called a scaling capital cost estimation. This equation is a scaling capital cost uh, estimation. Uh, how we use this equation? Let's say we have the price, the cost of a heat exchanger in the cost of a heat exchanger that has a surface area of 100 square meter. We have the cost. Okay, let's say in this year, we, ha we have the cost in this year for this heat exchanger, that is, uh, let's say, $5,000. $5, now, if I, ha if I want to buy a heat exchanger that has 250 square meter, okay, what will be the cost? This is the typical question that we have. In to, to use this kind of equation. So we can use this equation. We have the surface area, okay? The second one, the last one that I want is 250. This is 100. I have the previous cost. The cost for 100 is 500. I just put in this equation. And I will find the cost of my heat exchanger. So the most important parameter here is this N here. The cost, we call it cost exponent. So this cost exponent is usually about 0 0.6, okay? In the next slide, you will see that. And uh, yeah, like this, this is the equipment cost attribute, okay? The A, we call it equipment cost attribute. That's why it's wrong with A. The C is cost, okay? So this A sometimes can be the size, Okay, can be for example, it exchange it can be area surface area. So let me correct this here, please. So for this heat exchanger, for the heat exchanger, it can be heat exchanger. It can be area. It can be for a pump that can be the power. Uh, it can be I don't know for a fire heater. It can be the heat duty. The amount of the fuel, so it can be any parameter. It's not necessarily the area, okay? But since it's showing with A, I, I just give you an example of area. But this is called equipment cost attribute. It can be any parameter, capacity, flow rate, power, area, and so on. Okay, this, uh, is, okay, N is usually between 6 to Yes, N is usually between 6, 0 0.4 to 0 0.8, and a value of 0 0.6 is a very typical value that uh, they use it in many, many industries, many places. Then, uh, as I said, 0 0.6 is one of the uh, typical value, and they call it, when we use 0 0.6, they call it the uh, 6 over 10 zone or 0 0.6 zone rule. They, they, they read it in this way. So, most of the time we assume that all the equipments they have, I mean, for all equipments, most of the time we consider 0 0.6 when we are going to, uh, when we are going to uh, estimate the cost of the equipment. And don't forget that when we use this equation, it's just kind of an order of magnitude estimate. It's not, it's not really, you know, very, very accurate. It's, it's kind of order of magnitude. This is not, uh, okay, this is not very important. I will show it more, just show you one example that, you know, like how the cost and the, the capacities are related. So, uh, okay. We we have okay most of the time n as I said n is 0 0.6 or sometimes we have such a such a such a curve you know that that what is this curve so uh, here what we have done 
uh, instead of we can simplify this equation and we can extract we can put cb and abn all together and we call it k the coefficient okay so then we can, instead of using the above equation we can use this equation c a k a a n okay so k k is a constant n is a constant so then a this a and c they will be the variable okay we can do we can plot we can plot uh, c a versus a in this such a curve okay if we do it in the log logarithmic uh, axis okay we can have uh, we can have a straight line that has a slope of 0. Uh, n which is 0. 0.6 for example how we can do it if you take a ln of uh, this equation you will have ln c a ln k uh, k a a n s okay so based on the properties of ln this will be ln k plus ln a a power n Again, based on the properties of ln, so it will be ln k n times ln a a a. Okay. So this is your x axis. This is your y axis. Okay. This is your y axis here. Okay, so what you have, you have now a line y equal to n x plus l n k. Okay, so this is your y axis, this is your x. So this this curve is based on logarithmic logarithmic uh, axis. Okay, that is a straight in the logarithmic axis is a straight line that has a slope equal to n. Okay, and the intercept is here, K. This is your intercept, K. L and K actually. Okay, so no, no need to, to know this uh, this details. I just wanted to know to tell you why why we have this line, this is the line because we use this equation in logarithmic axis. So like this is for the centrifugal air blower. That for example, if I give you if I give you is already you know like you don't need the initial condition let's say you don't need to know what is the initial condition what you, how you use this you, let's say I give you the area of the the flow rate of the centrifugal air blower that you need to purchase let's say I give you the flow rate uh, uh, 7 cubic meter per second 7 cubic meter per second and you just go to this curve up to here and you go you go first uh, vertically up until you reach to the curve. You remark that point and then you go horizontally and find the price. Okay, so it's very. This is how simply we use this curve. Or uh, okay, if instead of uh, you know some some other charts, some other curves, instead of plotting C against N, they plot C divided by uh, c versus a they will plot c over a versus a so in that case what you need to do you just need to extract one a from here that you will have a n power minus one times a okay a k times a power n minus one times a You just need to put, take A to the other side, then you will have such a C A uh, is equal to K A times N minus 1. So this will be your X, this will be Y in logarithmic axis actually. That's why now you have a line that has the slope N minus 1. Okay, if you put N 0 0.6, you will have a slope minus 0 0.4 that's why this line is declining it has a negative negative slope 
Okay, so instead of C, now we have CA. For example, uh, in previous chart we had cos. Now we have what? We have cos per per the the volumetric flow rate. Cos per as I said, A can be area, can be volumetric flow rate, can be mass flow rate, can be power, depending to the equipment in different parameters. So you have the cos per flow rate okay so here you have x-axis which is your volumetric flow rate here you have the cost per volumetric flow rate so we can have these two type of charts the first one here and this one then uh, okay uh, in this table uh, this table give us some additional information uh, for uh, let's say uh, for n, okay, for n, uh, sometimes uh, we need to, sometimes we need to know what's the exact n. There are curves, there are, uh, uh, there are many, uh, I mean, there are tables like that that can give you the value of the n. For example, uh, this is one example of those tables that we have. For example, for reciprocating compressor with motor drive, uh, for for the capacity in kilowatt in the in this range n is this much for i don't know vertical tank car carbon steel that has a capacity between 0 0.4 to 6 uh, 76 uh, cubic meter n that you have to use is this one for jacketed kettle glass line okay that has the kettle is like for boiling something usually so that has this this much capacity in cubic meter the end that you need to use in that equation will be 0.48 so we have different type of uh, curves like that that uh, uh, that we usually use uh, to uh, i mean different curves like that that we can use to find n uh, for the specific equipment with a specific capacity like like what listed here 